saying that every day is a new day to learn something new? Of course, there's always time for learning something new. Oh, that's great, partner. Because today, we're going to talk one of the most widely accepted models in the field of the cosmology to explain the formation and evolution of the solar system. And that is the nebular hypothesis. Do you have any more trivia? Yes, I have. Are you ready to hear me? -da -da -da. According to the theory, the suns and all the planets of our solar system began as a giant cloud molecule gas and dust. Then, about 4.7 million years ago, something happened that caused the clouds to collapse. This could have been the result of passing star or shock waves from a supernova. But the end, the result was gravitational collapse at the center of the solar system. It seems like this hypothesis has a lot to offer. And it's only just the beginning. The beginning. So, let's dive deeper into our lesson. The universe comprises countless galaxies, each one containing numerous stars. Around some of, the st of those stars, there are planets, just like those that orbit our own stars, the Sun. The nebular hypothesis is the most widely accepted explanation for how the Sun and the planets in the solar system may have, been, have formed. When our solar system was first created, all that was thought to have existed was a cold spinning cloud of gas called the solar nebula. The nebula resulted from an uneven distribution of gases throughout the universe. As the gravitational pull began to condense the gas towards the center, the speed of the rotation increased. This caused the cloud to flatten, creating an accretion disk. Matter continued to collect as the growing force of gravity threw it toward the center. Eventually, the gas warmed from an increasing pressure as the mass further increased. The gravity also increases and as a result, the temperature continued to rise. A ball of hot gas formed in the center of the accretion disk, creating a protostar, also known as the sun. Finally, when enough gas gathered in the center of the protostar, the pressure generated enough heat to fuse the atoms forming a star. Outside the star, matter was forming into clumps of gas, dust, and rock which created protoplanets. These protoplanets continue to grow as they trap material in their gravitational fields. Because the protoplanets all form from the same cloud of gas and dust, they travel around the sun in the same direction and in the same plane. The nebula hypothesis also explains how the planets are arranged, the heat and the solar winds caused by the sun swipe the lighter gases further out into the developing solar system. This is why the rock terrestrial planets Mercury, Venus, Earth and Mars are located closer to the sun. The gas giants Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune formed in the outer, cooler region of the solar system. The solar system continued to evolve even after its initial formation. Large asteroids slammed into planets and the planets themselves differentiated into layers as they slowly cooled. Although the nebular hypothesis cannot be directly tested, it is a useful description for how a solar system forms. It explains why planets and the stars they orbit usually spin in the same direction and lie in the same plane. It also explains the arrangement of the planets with the rocky planets nearest to the sun and the gas giants farther away. So, the next time that you look at the stars twinkling in the night sky, imagine new planets forming using these very steps.